nerd dice. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 94 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem, Nerd Dice. And in this episode, we'll be doing some actual coding. We're going to fix a, uh, a code smell that shows up in our code climate um, static code analysis plugin that we are service that we use in order to um, keep our uh, report on our gems maintainability. So the way that this works is whenever there, a commit is run and we do our build, uh, we report that information over to Code Climate. And this happens for both this project and the nerddice.com Ruby on Rails project. And right now we have a maintainability rating of A, but we do have one code smell associated with that. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the terminology, a code smell is something that works, but is less than ideal. So there are things like you could have um, repeated code blocks that occur. You just control C, control V, the same thing. Uh, and instead of refactoring that out into a method that you can reuse, you put the same logic repeated over and over again in your, uh, in your code. So that would be an example of something to avoid. You want to refactor that out, and instead of um, copying and pasting that all the time, you want to have all the different places call that method that you've extracted out instead of repeating the same code logic over and over again. Um, that makes your code easier to maintain, easier to read, and um, in the event that you say change something you don't have to go to 10 places you go to one place um, and then it's updated in, in all 10 places if you've called the method instead of re <laughs> copying and pasting the method everywhere uh, there are other aspects just in general software development you want to avoid long and complex methods um, for again the same reasons for uh, the repeated code block sort of thing, you also want to make it easier for people to read your code, easier to maintain it, your code. And um, the aspect that our code smell is related to in this case is cognitive complexity. So somebody is trying to read this code and figure out what's happening and there are just too many things going on here. So if we go take a look at our convenience methods here, find our violation and it starts on line 241 in this get number to keep from method name so we've got a comment here and it's it's not a super long method, but it's uh, return nil unless, so that is a decision there. Uh, match is a decision um, that returns a Boolean um, specified number we're getting, and then we're determining the default. Um, and then uh, after we've determined whether the default is one or number of dice minus one, then we're making the decision about specified number, uh, and these are all, um, they're the, uh, the ternary operator in Ruby. So this is like if condition action to take if true, action to take if false in all of these cases. So um, you could equivalently write this if condition do this, else do that, end. Um, it would be uh, take up far more space. And uh, when you've got something like this, that's a one liner, this is a um, smaller and easier, more compact way to read it. But it's still, there's a lot of, there are a lot of decisions being made here. So um, we'll try to break this down and uh, have fewer things being done here so that the cognitive complexity to the uh, the person reading this code is less than it currently is. Uh, the 
convenience methods here, I'll just note um, the episodes 66 through 86 of this series is where we did this Ruby meta programming uh, kind of epic and series where you can go in and let me just show the, the functionality real quick. So if you want to do now roll 3d8 with advantage, uh, I need to include it. I'll just do it from the nerd dice. module here instead of including it directly but you can see it's uh, doing that interpreting interpreting the uh, the method name that we're calling which doesn't exist at the time of call uh, and making a call to other methods that we have and then defining this method so that it exists as long as the Ruby interpreter is around um, it's uh, really cool Ruby's use of the magic method and meta programming stuff. It's some of the stuff, it's one of the things as a software engineer, just as a software engineer, I'm the most proud of in terms of the uh, the elegance. And once we we went through kind of the, the phases of working but ugly, and then have three episodes about how we refactor this to get it down to where we've got just the, the one code smell left that we want to knock out. Uh, but, uh, that those are some hidden gem episodes in our uh, catalog of videos. I think that the most views we have out of any of them is episode 66, where I introduce and explain the concepts of Ruby metaprogramming. And then the rest of them, the, the, the most views out of any of them is four. So um, it's one of those things, you, you do something you're really proud of and nobody views it. You go and you change your Ruby version in... Um, in your project and that that video gets hundreds of views so uh, if you are interested in learning about Ruby metaprogramming I would highly recommend going through all of those uh, those videos in that epic from episodes 66 to 86 I'll put the the playlist of this in the um, the, the, re the show notes for the related videos so that uh, in the event that you get some time to work on your Ruby programming uh, you can watch through those videos and kind of see what I did to make this work the way it does. So commercial for that epic over, we'll now go in and talk about how we're going to reduce the complexity of this. So the the, the biggest candidate I think here is to um, take this uh, setting of the default. So you, the Ruby, I'll go on a brief explanation here uh, of functional programming versus object oriented programming. You can, Ruby is generally got the reputation of being an object oriented language, but you can use the principles of functional programming in Ruby just fine. Uh, and one of those is have a function do one thing and do it well. So the name of this get number to keep from method name, uh, it is essentially at the, um, the macro level doing that one thing, but the code climate is telling us, uh, maybe you're, you're doing more than one thing here and you can uh, isolate this down and get it even smaller so that you've got even more uh, reusable methods and it's um, even closer to kind of the, that functional programming paradigm where you want to have uh, your input, have your function do one thing, do it well, and then have an output, have it be uh, repeatable and, um, um, and all that. So what we're going to do, I think, is refactor this out into uh, determine default from number of dice uh, and then call that there, see if that gets us down to what we need here. So we will create a new method here. I don't think there's any need for us. Um, I think these are private methods to begin with. Yeah, they're all private methods to begin with. So um, 
I will create a new method here called get default from number of dice. And you will be providing in the number of dice here. And we're not going to need to do, to do the assignment here. We're just going to do the logic. So Ruby has implicit return here. So if I do this, it will. It's the equivalent of doing return this, um, since that's kind of so. It, it it's a convention enough in Ruby that I don't need to explicitly return something. Uh, unless, say, here, you can look up a couple lines higher where it's returning nil unless that's before, that's a return before the, um, the function is being completed, kind of a short circuit return. In this case, we are going to um, return what is the right side of this assignment operator, uh, and we will um, now replace that with this and try rerunning our um, spec here. So uh, another thing to know here is this is why it's so important to write good software tests. So if you don't have a robust set of tests that um, cover everything you care about in the project you're working on. When you go and try to make a maintenance change like this, you really might not have the confidence to know whether or not you break something. So we will take a look at this in our, let me get out of the, or I'll just open up, I already had an interpreter open. So we'll leave that interpreter open on the other one and exit out of this one, get status, we'll check out a branch. And we'll call it essentially the same name that we have for our issue here. Did I move this into in progress? I did. Take this, and it's going to be a fairly long branch name, but we're going to use it once and it'll be gone by the end of this video, so not the end of the world. instead of control shift V. All right. And then we'll, I realize this is kind of weird that we've got hyphens and then underscores, but again, um, nobody's, I'm not gonna be reusing this and it's not, the, the, your branch name isn't actually part of your, um, your code base in an, in a meaningful way, it's just a point or two. A, a git branch is just a point or two, a, um, a commit. So we will now, we've got our diff change here. That should work. We will run our, our specs all pass. You can see they, they run fairly quickly. Um, this. In the nerddice.com series, the um, the mini test tests, especially for the system ones where you're using the browser, run much slower. But this is kind of what you want ideally in a Ruby project. So we ran 745 examples. If you want to go and look at GitHub, we've got a bunch of things being tested. We use RSpec shared examples to um, kind of get rid of repetition in um, things that we're doing similar over and over again. Uh, but there's a lot being tested here. And if I were to 
have made a mistake in how I do this. So let's say I change this to two instead of one. I would expect that all a, a fairly large subset of our tests would start failing because it's now returning the wrong logic. So I go and rerun this in the world where I messed it up. And you can see all over the place um, whenever this method is being uh, called. Now we've got eight places where um, we've tested this particular bit of logic and it's all failing, which is what you want when you mess something up. You write your, you, you go through the effort of writing good tests so that when you fat finger something, when you're fixing a code smell or whatever, you don't break your entire world. We will unbreak this now. And then the last thing we want to do, let me see here. I mean, while we're at it, let's just do something similar here. Call this get pattern match or default. And this will take two arguments. number default and then this will just be this now That still works. And now we've got it so in like me in the future trying to read this now, I'm going to be able to say, okay, we're gonna short circuit return nil unless we've got a match there. Uh, then we're going to uh, get the specified number. Uh, and then based on the uh, number of dice, we'll figure out what the default is and then we'll get the pattern match or the default based on those two things that otherwise that we figured out and return that value back. And um, so that is now working um, and those um, those decisions that are happening, uh, it, it's just a, a little bit easier to see what's going on there um, instead of um, trying to figure out and keep track, okay, this is what is going on here and I've got to like line by line uh, figure it out. Whereas here you can say, all right, this is what it's doing. I can look at the, the comment on it and um, go from there. So speaking of the comments on it, uh, the last thing I'm gonna do is write comments for each of these methods. And then we, will, uh, we should be um, good to commit this and reevaluate whether Code Climate has um, deemed this um, a sufficient fix to the code smell that we had. Uh, we will also run Rubocop to make sure that Rubocop, uh, nothing new that we did, uh, upset the authorities. And then we'll um, be able to close this one out and hopefully be back to um, zero violations and code smells on Code Climate. So I'll pause and write my comments. And um, once we're back, we'll take a look at them. All right, I've got the comments for these two methods done now. I should be able to rerun my specs. Now we'll run Rubicop. 
there's a danger that the I might get a class too long error now, which I think might have happened when I was uh, too many lines, 106 out of 100. So I dealt with this with the um, refactoring thing, and I think I, I probably even initially refactored one of these things out into its own method. Uh, so I think I'm going to just, in this case, the least bad option here is to, um, I mean, I guess I could break this down into more than one file. I don't think that actually achieves anything though. So I'm going to instead use Rubocop comments to enable and disable. Uh, we probably have this an example of a comment like this here. So Rubocop disable metrics method length in this case but we can also do it here. So what you do is you, you do your disable comment, and in this case, it will be metrics module length. And then at the end, even though this is taking up the whole source code file, we will do a RuboCop enable at the end. That should solve our RuboCop problem. So we're back to passing with RuboCop. We are passing with our spec. We have uh, still 100% coverage, which is what we want. So now I think we can a look at our diff. So we uh, replaced the direct usage of the logic with a call to another private method that we refactored out in both cases here. Um, one, the first one being one having one argument, uh, the second one needing two arguments because of the things referenced there. Uh, and then we just added the, uh, the RuboCop disable and the RuboCop enable there. So again, uh, Rubocop is a um, is your servant, not your master. So in the event that the the right decision to make is to um, have like you refactor something out and it goes beyond the hundred line arbitrary metric that they've got set, you um, can disable and enable that. Um, and in some of these other situations, we did. Like um, it does, it might make sense to break things down. Like if you look at our um, our structure here for say nerd dice class methods. So we have that class methods module. So nerd dice we got class methods here, and then this is requiring all this stuff from these different items there. I don't think the convenience methods necessarily benefits from the same uh, the same level of breakdown just because I um, I don't think it like these things are all so interrelated that um, it wouldn't really um, the, the trade-off of splitting that up, I, I, I don't think makes the code easier to read than it currently is. So that's my rationale behind that. Now we git add, git commit, sign it, we'll write our commit message here, pause and do that. All right, so I've got my commit message here. I will save it, close it,
push to this really long branch name. And we will open our pull request. Even if we have to rework with this for whatever reason, I'll still open the, the pull request for it. There's a, a nice view of our diff. Create the pull request. Let everything run. I don't know whether code climate will. Let me see if I can. find out whether those branch builds are picked up by code climate or not. So it looks like I might need to, it's only watching master. So uh, we will take a look. So our checks have passed, which is a good sign. I can now go in and check out the master branch. Get merge feature branch, get push. Branch delete. And that merges our pull request, which will come back and get the number for fifty. How about that? So we'll now go into our issue. And let me see, I'll pause and see how long it takes to, um, oh, it has already been cleared, nice. So we now have a clean bill of health in our code climate which means we can fixed by number 50, close our issue, update our backlog to move this to done. We are nearing the end here and uh, the ability to uh, release the patch versions of these gems. Um, we'll see you in the next video. Ruby on Rails 7 is out. Code along on a guided journey through the Rails 7 Getting Started Guide and beyond with test-driven development. There has never been a better time to learn Ruby on Rails. Hit the ground running with the newest version. Go to statelesscode.com slash getting started with Rails 7 to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is this. I cannot speak.